Hey everybody, this is my 20 long open topped office tank and today I added several new guppies, six new guppies in fact. I put two yellow guppies, two cobra guppies, and two fancy male guppies in there and they add a wonderful splash of color. I really enjoy guppies. I got these from PetSmart because believe it or not around here PetSmart has the best guppies. Uh, Petco does have some interesting ones. But there are only a few, and they weren't the really bright, colorful ones that I like. And both of my good pet stores that I go to, uh, the House of Tropicals down in Glen Burnie, and another one out in Frederick, uh, neither one of them had very much selection in the way of guppies. And I really specifically wanted guppies for this tank. I didn't just settle for guppies. I specifically was looking for them. And once again, I found really good-looking guppies at PetSmart. But... I don't want this video to be about PetSmart or guppies. In particular, I want this video to be about our expectations as fish keepers. Um, I recently got to thinking about this topic. I've been wanting to shoot a video about it for a while now. And it came up again recently when people were suggesting to me uh, different fish I could put in this tank for sort of the specimen fish. I was talking about the possibility of German blue rams. And as soon as I said that and people began explaining to me that the German Blue Rams really do need warm water, it has to be, you know, we'll say 85 degrees or thereabouts, so on and so forth, I immediately realized that's not the fish for me. And there's a reason that's not the fish for me, and that's because I know my personality, I know what my fish keeping schedule is like, if you even want to call it a schedule. I've just learned over the years not to expect something that's not going to happen of myself. I've learned my own, I'm trying to figure out how I'm trying to say this properly. It's expectations in myself that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the expectations of what this fish might do or might not do. But I know that I'm not good at keeping track of things. I know I'm not good at writing down notes and taking fiddly little details and so on and so forth. So if I've got a fish that needs that kind of care, it needs super specific water parameters, or if the temperature drops five degrees, it'll become sick and die. And that's just not the fish for me. And that's just because of that's who I am as my personality. I have fairly robust tanks. They're very low maintenance. The fish can tolerate a few days of lax maintenance if I don't get around to doing a water change. And that's deliberate. That's for a reason. If you're somebody that likes fiddly little details and likes taking notes and writing things down and doing constant water changes and all that kind of stuff, then maybe that is the kind of tank you want to set up. But... Don't have unrealistic expectations of yourself. If you're the kind of person that likes that sort of thing, and then you set up a tank that requires virtually no maintenance, you may find that you're bored. You need a tank that gives you something to do on a regular basis, whereas I'm the other way around. And that is key to me to happily and successfully keeping fish, is knowing my own not necessarily even skill set. I understand how to keep discus. I, I intellectually know how to keep discus. I also know that I couldn't ever keep discus because I'll skip water changes or I'll forget when the last one I did was. And if it's a fish that needs really super low total dissolved solids, or again, if it's any kind of fish that needs any really exacting sort of environment to live in, it's just not the fish for me. I don't get plants that require... Um, really specific care if they if they don't just live in my tanks then they don't live in my tanks I don't put plants in my tanks that don't just live I don't feed them I don't put ferds in there I don't use co2 injection I don't do anything the plants get light for 12 hours a day dark for 12 hours a day and then they get plenty of nutrients because of all of the dissolved solids from the fish and fish waste and all of the other uh, nutrients that develop and that's it I run really really simple tanks not because I don't know how to run a more complicated tank. It's just because I know myself and I know I won't maintain those tanks. And it just leads to disappointment. It leads to unsuccessful tanks. It leads to dead fish. You know, when I first got started keeping fish, I went out and I bought a bunch of fancy plecos. And, you know, I went way beyond my skill set. I went way beyond my understanding of, you know, I was three or four months into the hobby and I'm buying 90 and and $100 
Plecos, and I flushed a lot of money down the toilet. And over time, I began to realize that that's just not my personality. I'm not somebody that's going to keep these exotic fish that need exacting conditions and so on and so forth. And so I've shaped my tanks around my personality, my skill set. I think of it as my tank personality. It's not only what I like in far, as far as what the tank looks like, but it's a lot to do with how the tank functions. Is it a tank that requires me to get in here on a regular basis and do fiddly little work in the, um, in the plants? Do I have to get in here and trim the plants constantly because they, you know, rapidly produce, you know, waste and dead growth or do, you know, whatever, whatever it is, if it's going to be something like that, then that's just not something I'm going to enjoy. So if I've got my expectations wrong, if I'm putting a plant in there that's going to require that kind of work and then I expect to just ignore it the way I do and think it's going to be successful, well, I'm going to be disappointed. And it's not because the plant's not working right. It's because I got my expectations wrong. So knowing ourselves, knowing our personality, knowing our skill sets, you know, knowing how much experience we have in the hobby uh, and being honest about that kind of stuff with ourselves. I know a lot of us, uh, myself included, you know, again, these are lessons I've learned um, over the years, I'm not saying this because I'm, you know, imagining it in other people. I'm saying this because I've been there and done that. And when I first started keeping fish, I thought for sure I could keep these fancy fiddly fish. And, you know, at one point I envisioned myself as being, you know, the guy that kept all these little, you know, fancy fish in their basement and having like, you know, f fancy plants like orchids and African violets and all that kind of stuff. And I tried to do that. I tried to set stuff up like that. And again, I learned what disappointment was. I learned how to kill fish. I learned how to have algae covered plants and so on and so forth. And I learned that that's just not how I am. You know, if I'm trying to force myself to be somebody I'm not in order to keep fish because they sort of go outside my personality... It's just, it's going to lead to not having a good time for anybody. So just keep your expectations, you know, realistic uh, about your own skill sets, about your own wants and desires and so on and so forth. And just be realistic when you set your tanks up. And I think you will have a much, much better experience overall. And you will experience a lot less disappointment and loss if you just keep your expectations fairly realistic. So there you go. There's my two cents. There's my first look at my new guppies that I got uh, from the PetSmart. I'm still thinking about what I'm going to be putting in this tank as a specimen fish. Um, you know, keyhole cichlid still comes to mind. I really looked again at the German blue rams when I was at the PetSmart today. But I think, again, it's just I don't want a fish that if the temperature drops a few degrees and I don't notice that that fish might die or, or become ill because of that, because it's likely that if the temperature dropped for a few days, I wouldn't notice. I've had filters shut down for days without me noticing before. Um, you know, again, I know this about myself. I know that's how I am. I know that having a fish that might die, if I don't notice the filter's not running, probably not the best fish for me because it's entirely possible that I will no not notice that the filter isn't running you know, for several days. That that has happened on more than one occasion, believe it or not. I've, I've gone days without noticing uh, a filter is shut down. So keep it realistic. Be honest about what you are and who you are and all that kind of stuff and reflect that in your fish tanks. And I think you have a much, much more uh, successful and happy time keeping fish. So there's again my two cents and the first look at my new guppies. Don't forget this one here is my 20-gallon office tank. Thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.